Hey everyone, I'm John Lynn, the founder and chief editor at Healthcare IT Today. We're here at the HIMSS 2023 conference. We're excited to bring you another in our series of interviews with top leaders in health IT. And our guests are Tom Stafford, he's director of healthcare strategy at CDW, and Ryan Witt, managing director of industry solutions group at Proofpoint. Welcome guys. Yeah, it's great to be here. Yeah, thanks. It's kind of a reunion for us. It is yeah. a reunion. <laughs> We've done this multiple times. It is. In multiple I venues, love doing so. this. Yeah. Definitely. Well, Brian's I mean, a you, great guy. You always have such good insights and perspectives in the always evolving industry of security. So I'm excited for this discussion. But ever evolving. Before we, yeah, ever evolving. That's what makes it challenging, yep. right? <laughs> yeah, before we dive into that, though, uh, you know, how about you uh, start us off? Tell us a little bit about Proofpoint. So, Proofpoint, uh, we are all about protecting people and defending data. I mean, people are undoubtedly the most uh, attacked vector today and has been for many years now. Um, and so we have a lot of solutions focused on how do you identify who's being attack, attacked and then protecting them. And then in the event that they do break through, how do you defend that data? Because the attacks are almost always about some form of monetization event. So how do you defend that exfiltration of data to prevent any sort of meaningful loss of, of data or yeah. any harm to the, to the organization. And my role is to really focus that sort of, um, or look at the aperture within healthcare and to make sure that we're really solving for healthcare industry use cases. That's been a considerable investment the company's made in healthcare now for seven plus years. Awesome. Tom, how about yourself and CDW? Uh, CDW, uh, I think right now we're the largest uh, solution and service provider in North America. Uh, CDW has evolved in the last few years. Everybody knows this has the big red box, <laughs> uh, but we're a lot more than that now. So we yeah. did acquire eight companies in the last three years, wow. which was made us go right into services. If we would have grown it organically, it would have taken 10 years. Sure. Uh, but, we, but we did acquire these companies, which now allow us to be completely turnkey for our customers. So. We're still that great logistics engines we've always been, but we also now provide services across the tech tech, all about security, but also into the clinical realm too. So it's exciting times at CVW. That's awesome. Well, Tom, I love talking to you because you're a former CIO. How did the sec right security technology help you as a CIO? Um, when I was a CIO, the two things I struggled with were adoption and cyber, because as Ryan said, they're all about attacking healthcare because it's monetizable. Yeah, so sure. uh, my gimmick was D-cubed, uh, which essentially was deception, detection, deterrence, and then the cube or three was third-party assurance. So Proofpoint was part of my security stack. And I will say one thing about security is that it's like the largest tech stack we have because you got to protect across so many layers. Sure. Um, but first thing, like Ryan said, it was all about the user. And so what Proofpoint did for me was it really helped me defend the user when it came to email. And one time they really saved my butt at yeah. like 10. Let's well, hear about it. It was 4.54 p.m. on a Friday. <laughs> you remember the time. Oh, I That's do, because hackers don't attack during the day. Yeah. And they, it was time, they right, waited right to the end of the day when everybody was tired. And it was a, it was a campaign that we were part of, unbeknownst to us, at uh, 4.54. And what we didn't know was that there was 170 folks targeted. It, looked, it was an email that came from the chairman of the board. 13 people clicked on it. Unbeknownst to us at the time, one person actually went further into it. And they like double clicked and it looked like a remote login session. And this user put their credentials in. And this all happened in the course of about, I'd say three minutes. At 4.58, we get a call from Proofpoint. You wow. guys were a part of this attack. Literally, if Proofpoint wouldn't have called us at that time, we wouldn't have known about it, and this hacker would have been in this account. Just been uh, and they, it was credential hashing, but they wanted to mine it and then see what they could pull out. But the TAP product you have totally saved us. That's amazing. Yeah. Yeah, I, love I felt that. violated. It was like my first time I was attacked <laughs> that I knew about, uh, but total sa saved us. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Well, it's great to have that technology there, right? And I think that's what we're at, right? I mean, we, we, we know that hacks are going to happen mm -hmm. in organizations. The question is, how do you detect it? How do you recover from it? Those are the discussions we've had for a, a long time. But Ryan, I'd love to hear your thoughts. Like, you know, we're in a current economic uncertainty. I think we all kind of feel this, I'm not sure where we're at economically. How is that impacting the healthcare security world right now? Uh, so building on Tom's point, and, th and thank you very much for your kind words. Um, 
I never met a security team or a information technology team at HIMSS or in healthcare that says, I have so much resources, so much budget, <laughs> so much technology, I don't know what to do with right. it. Yeah. It's the exact opposite, and, and more acutely now, as you kind of uh, alluded to. And so you're often in a position of having to make trade-offs or having to make choices about where do you want to make that investment? That investment could be in technology, could be in procedures, it could sure. be in training. Time's um, an issue too, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and, and so our hypothesis uh, is very much around when you're making those selections, when you're deciding where you want to layer in your security controls, it would be really advantageous to understand as precisely as you can who is being attacked. And so we focus very heavily on trying to provide that level of insight to say your clinical research team, your nursing team, your hospice organization is being attacked. This is desirable targets for threat actors for all sorts of reasons. So therefore, if you had that awareness of that, how what would you do to mitigate against that sort of attack? And this is where the combination of, of Proofpoint and CDW really is a powerful force because we have a lot of security controls that we, we, we provide the marketplace that solve for that exact problem. And then the CDW opens up that aperture even a little bit further to offer a broader range of controls. Sure. And, and I, I think understanding and choosing the right control is a much more philosophical and detailed conversation and one that each institution has to have with itself. Yeah. But that's where that, that trusted advisor, whether it's a proof point uh, in combination with the CDW or CDW directly, can offer that sort of guidance. Okay, now, we understand, say from proof point, that you are being attacked in this particular area. Now, what are we going to do about that? Yeah. And that's so. I think that insight is is really key, and it helps organizations of today who are really struggling with, you know, budget constraints, resource constraints, to go make a much more informed decision about where to make that investment. Yeah. Do you have some good examples of what a healthcare organization can do to kind of make the most of the limited resources that of course every organization has? Yeah, sure. I mean, I we talk, there's a couple of examples I could probably highlight here. One is um, we, we have published data that said at a point in time, and we, we've seen this as a reoccurring theme, unfortunately, that the hospice, if you have a hospice department or in your organization, for lots of reasons, we don't you know, we don't necessarily always know. We don't talk to threat actors, but sure. they are targeted. Interesting. Okay. Hospice. Uh, hospice is targeted. That's horrible, right? <laughs> so it's it's a probably heinous. because they it's, don't have the big yeah. like wall, right? Yeah. Well, and they're not as tech. They're Path lower tech than right. the hospice. <laughs> Sorry, hospice users, but just in general. Yeah. And they they're didn't also, get the stimulus. <laughs> and hospice is uh, they're a remote workforce. Oh. They're traveling all the time, which I think even puts some more at odds. They're always connecting over the Wi-Fi and stuff, so, and they but I can't believe they're hitting hospice workers. They can't have broader access to the patient record. They can have broader access to controlled substances. Um, the good nature of a hospice care worker means they're just so consumed with the comfort of that patient that maybe they don't always yeah. think about what they're clicking on. Like, these are all, sure. this is all conjecture. We don't sure. know this for sure, but this is, what, this is where we kind of got to. And so, what do you do about that then? Okay, now, so this is, and we find to your to your point a little bit earlier, Tom, it's like often they are not as well-trained. Right. So they haven't gone through the more normal battery of cybersecurity awareness training courses that could be available. So that, that would be an often utilized remedy to say, okay, we will look at that as a control to put into place now that we want to mitigate against that department who's being attacked. Interesting. Any examples you have? Yeah, so like we've, we're kind of, you said this earlier, but like everybody's just waiting for the attack. Mm -hmm. And I think that's truer than, a, than ever. So it's not if you're going to attack, it's really when. So what we've been seeing a lot is folks doing more tabletop exercises yeah, and planning sense. for the attack. So detection you need no matter what. And like I talked earlier, like Ryan saved me one night and we would have never saw that. But what I see IT leaders uh, and security leaders do today is they're focused on resiliency and incident response. Because if you know you're going to get attacked, now you're not focused on 
protecting yourself, you're still protecting yourself, but now sure. you're focusing on what is my RTO, what is my RPO, how quick can I get back up? Everyone should do a tabletop exercise for ransomware. And it's not going to the unit and shutting down computers, it's having general counsel marketing, your operations yeah. team and your, your senior leadership in a room and you're making decisions and you're practicing because the last thing you want to do is do that for the first time Saturday morning at 2 a.m. You're going to, you were, and so that we see a lot more folks practicing and just reducing your RPO and RTO. So now they're kind of waiting for the attack, but they're going to get back up as soon as possible because today healthcare is more reliant on technology than it's ever been due to sure. meaningful use in COVID. And I mean, we have full adoption of the EHR finally. And so yeah. you got to protect and get back. In, in a panel discussion I was doing here at HIMSS, uh, I, I asked a doctor, what's the feeling when you lose access to your IT system? And she said, sheer terror. Which sheer <laughs> terror. No, it's is, true. It, that, it's like what yeah. you just described. <laughs> I, to me, this is kind of like the silver lining that's out there now. Because I think there's been a marked change in healthcare's attitude toward cyber attacks. Mm -hmm. Too frequently in the past, it has been oriented around we don't want to be on OCR's wall of shame. We don't want reputation. <laughs> I used to say that. Right, yeah. yeah. We don't want reputational Which harm. Which they still don't want. They but. still don't, of course. <laughs> and we don't want financial harm. But now the industry is starting to make that direct connection between a cyber event and patient outcomes. Yep. And the driver to invest in a cybersecurity, in an enhanced cybersecurity posture, is around making sure that we are able to meet our health systems, our our institution's mission, which is around patient safety, patient care, sure. you know? So, and I I think when you make that connection, it is easier to explain to the board why you make, why, yeah. why that investment is needed. And I think they buy in more into, okay, we have to do this for the sanctity of who we are, you know, what, what we're all about, our entity. Right, so. that's a great shift to think about. Well, and even the Joint Commission now is asking about your cybersecurity program. Your cyber insurers are giving you discounts if you're more mature in cyber. Right. So right. I agree with Ryan. Like, and I think it's because we've been attacked so many times. Finally, everybody's getting it. Yeah. And uh, but it it has changed, and it'll keep evolving, and we will keep have to follow the landscape and then protect against it. Yeah. So, Tom, what are you seeing as far as trends? Are you seeing people choosing to outsource their security efforts? Are they bringing more and kind of pulling it back more in-house? What, what kind of trends are you seeing in that regard? Um, it's hard to have a CISO these days because they're expensive and they yeah. move around a lot. So we're seeing a lot more VCSOs. We are seeing more managed services around security. Um, a NOC or a SOC is key. Hospitals are 24 seven. So if you do have, if you partner with the SOC or like we have our own SOC too, okay. but you need someone to always be watching. And so we are seeing more of a shift of outsourcing that sort of activity because they need it 24 seven. And sometimes it's easier to work against the contract than trying to hire and keep the talent in house. Yeah. And due to COVID, everybody working from home these days, a lot of our security professionals decided to go from healthcare to another industry because they say, could. That's the problem. And that's a struggle, <laughs> like yeah. a resource challenge. Yeah. Yeah. Where we weren't before, right? Because yeah. normally the hospital was the, depending on the city, it was probably one of the biggest businesses in town. Sure. And if you lived in a town, that's where you work. But now you can work anywhere. And I mean, I even like um, my hospital, we had folks go from healthcare to energy, but it was okay because they yeah. just were still working behind the computer security. at all. Yeah, <laughs> that's still, security. Yeah. still applies. Right. That's really interesting. Ryan, anything you'd add? And, and maybe are the changes in hiring practice? He talks about remote work, right? And even just the demand for security expertise. How is that impacting healthcare for, for good and bad, I think? It's probably never been more challenging. I mean, most, most InfoSec teams I talk to, CISOs are broadly in the team, they have open recs. Cybersecurity open recs, yeah. e even in a constrained economy, uh -huh. there's still open recs all over the Which place. Which is hard to understand. We see all these thousands of layoffs, but right. in the security field, maybe not so much. Not <laughs> so much. And so I, I think there's been a strong movement towards staff augmentation. Um, not always outsourcing, because I think they don't always want to out. Sometimes they do, but it's more about how do I augment what I currently have, particularly in, in, in a very difficult hiring environment can I bring on resources elsewhere to go help solve some of that problem? 
so yes, we see that that is a significant focus for um, one way to go solve some of these challenges. And I think as we get more and more investment and more and more focus on cybersecurity, I don't see this problem going away yeah. anytime soon. So <laughs> we can't get enough people. I mean, it, I nurses take so a while, right but now. security professionals I mean, you, right. too. <laughs> we'll, you know, we'll look at automation. We'll look at machine yeah. learning to to help a little bit, but I don't think it's going to bridge the gap. In a, you know, in, in any time, anytime soon. So I think you're going to still look at more and more ways to bring in outside resources in to go help and supplement the yeah. workforce. And one trend I've seen too, especially with going to this more dissolved perimeter workforce is identity. Mm. So identity was always important, but now identity access management is a great focus from healthcare organizations across the nation because you may never actually see this person, you know, physically, um, but you have to be able to control their access and understand it. And that's where a lot of automation occurs too. Um, because you can automate 85% of it and just work with the 15% for exceptions, but identity is huge these days. Yeah, well, that's a great example. Are there other things that healthcare organizations should be watching or, or maybe working on from a healthcare security perspective? Uh, identity access management is really huge right now. Vulnerability management. So your two biggest deterrents when it comes to cyber attacks is the user and to make sure that your patches are up to date because they can only attack you if there's a vulnerability in the system. And so we are seeing greater focus on vul vulnerability patch management. Yeah. And then, like I said, tabletop exercises, pen testing, you know, uh, b blue and red testing or purple testing and bringing in these white hat hackers to really test your systems. So, and then, and you'll have a failure, but at least it's a friendly person that found this for you. <laughs> and then you can fix it and then you're stronger. Yeah, but that, that's where we're seeing the focus today from. Interesting. I, I, yeah. I would build on what Tom said, and I would just, yeah. I think everything Tom said is absolutely right. And I would say, stay focused. Yeah. Um, don't be consumed by deep face technology. Don't be consumed by chat GPT or other AI. Like, I, I think Verizon said it really, really well in their most recent, I think it was Verizon, their most recent uh, threat survey, threat report, and they said, we could have done a copy and paste from the 2010 report to now because essentially nothing has changed. Mm. And the point is we haven't adequately blocked and tackled mm. on all the basic sort of fundamentals. So until we get that part of the threat landscape or the security posture hardened, we're not going to see a need for threat actors to do, to be overtly sophisticated in using deep fake technologies or yeah. Etc. I mean, let's get, let's solve for the what the current problem is. It's probably a big reason. I don't want to go on a tangent here too much. It's probably a big reason why we haven't seen, even though everybody in this show knows, medical devices are highly vulnerable, sure. but they're not that heavily exploited because they don't need to be, because phishing still There's works. A lot easier ways. Yeah. Phishing, <laughs> ransomware still right. works. So well, let's, that's the human element. Yeah. Right. Solve for that first. Well, and I think what I hear you saying is don't overthink it, right? Like sometimes we, we and we like that big, sexy, shiny right. object, right? But, you know, let, let's make sure we get the basics first. Yeah. Because, and, and maybe along with that, it sounds like there's a message that, like there are solutions to these problems, right? Like you don't have to just, you know, you know, live in this world where you're like, you know, that there's nothing you could do about it. Like you said, patch management yeah. is there and mm -hmm. available, right? We, uh, yes, I mean, I, as I was kind of mentioned in my in the intro, my, my role is I run the industry solutions group at Proofpoint. So that's that's managing our 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 go to market efforts and our solutions effort on our focus industries. There are some of those industries where we are waiting for roadmap development. Like you know, customers are saying, "When's this coming? I need uh, that because they can see an advantage for sure. that in their environment." Healthcare, no one's waiting. We just need to deploy <laughs> what's already on the truck whether it's from Proofpoint or more broadly from what CDW uh, offers. So, I mean, it, there is just need to be deployed today with Tom. So don't, don't, yeah, we don't need to wait. Make, make the base investments and that solve the elements that, that, that cover blocking and tackling essentially. Awesome. And the practice and test. Yeah. I mean, we have all this, this big stack and obviously Proofpoint's a big part of it because when it comes to email security, because we brought up the end user a lot of times during this conversation. Uh, but you got to practice. The more you practice, the better you'll be when it really happens. Yep. Um, 
and practice makes it so that you're not as stressed. That, yeah, that's yeah, what I've yeah. learned. Right, right, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Awesome. Well, Ryan, where can people go to learn more about Proofpoint? Uh, come to Proofpoint uh, slash healthcare, where we have you know, this significant investment and in resources. We have the threat insight I alluded to. I can, we can talk about where we believe the threat landscape is, is happening in healthcare. And so there's well, a wide range of content there. Yeah. So please you know, visit that website and to learn more or, or contact me directly if you like. Awesome. Well, yeah, I think Proofpoint is actually a data company with all the data you have from emails and all that. Oh my <laughs> yeah. God. It's pretty yeah. awesome. So you have a lot of great resources. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, Tom, how about uh, CDW? Where can people go to learn more? Yeah, so for CDW, uh, Obviously, we have uh, account executives across the nation that support our customers. We partner with Proofpoint, so you can go to your seller or your account executive, uh, and then we can work together with our solution architects to make sure that we fit a uh, Proofpoint solution into your environment, and you're successful at it, and you're learning from it, and you're protecting against the threat attack. Excellent. Well, Ryan and Tom, I appreciate you taking the time to share these insights Absolutely. and perspectives. This ever evolving constant challenge that keeps a lot of CIOs and CISOs up at night. So thank you so much. And thank you everyone for watching and listening. If you want to find more great healthcare IT content like this, be sure to check it out at healthcareittoday.com and search for Healthcare IT Today on your favorite podcast application. Thanks guys. Thank you.